गुड इवनिंग व्यूवर्स दिस इज डॉक्टर मनमोहन मणियार इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ आवर सीरीज ऑफ ट्यूटोरियल्स अबाउट वेरियस स्ट्रक्चरल इंजीनियरिंग इश्यूज टुडे वी शैल डिस्कस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज अबाउट द स्ट्रेंथ रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ रेनफोर्समेंट स्ट्रेंथ रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ द रेनफोर्समेंट बार्स इन आर सी स्ट्रक्चर आर डिफाइंड एंड प्रिस्क्राइब्ड इन नंबर ऑफ कोर्स आई एस फोर फाइव सिक्स टू थाउजेंड दैट इज द इंडियन कॉन्क्रीट कोड आई एस वन सेवन एट सिक्स टू थाउजेंड एट एंड देर आर फोर अमेंडमेंट्स सो दैट इज स्पेसिफिक कोड अबाउट रिन्फोर्समेंट वेन देर आर रिक्वायरमेंट्स अबाउट डक्टाइल डिटेलिंग देन आई एस वन थ्री नाइन टू जीरो टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन विथ अमेंडमेंट्स वन prescribe certain requirements about reinforcement and uh, recently this high rise code high rise rc structure code 16700 2017 and its amendment 1 so all these various codes prescribe various requirement sometimes it becomes confusing that which uh, provision of which code is to be applied how it is to be interpreted uh whether all provisions are necessary or depending on specific project we can uh, follow certain provisions so let us discuss uh, one by one with different codes and along with that uh, we will discuss which is applicable and what situation so we shall start with is 456 2000 now here you can see in the first column there are various reinforcement grades are shown of high yield strength deform bars these grades are as per the latest amendment of is 1786 you can see now the number of grades covered under this code has increased a lot you can see the grades fe415 fe415d fe415s fe500 fe500d fe500s fe550 fe550d and then fe 600 fe 650 and fe 700 there is no ductile category after 550 characteristic strength uh, which is 0.2% proof stress it is uh, mentioned and uh, characteristic strength is defined in is 456 as when not more than 5% of the samples are failing then that value is considered as the characteristic strength so depending on the grade of the reinforcement these are the values of the characteristic strength given in mpa partial safety factor for all this grades given in is 456 is 1.15 modulus of elasticity of reinforcement is constant for all these grades maximum strain in reinforcement is defined in is 456 so it is fy that is the characteristic strength divided by 1.15 modulus of elasticity plus 0.002 is 456 has given two different graphs or representative figures first is for this 0.2% proof stress and second where the yield strength for the bar uh, which are showing the behavior with a definitive yield point so this is the stress strain graph plotted this slope of this straight line portion is the modulus of elasticity this is the 0.02% strain from this this line is plotted parallel to the straight line portion of stress strain curve where it cuts the stress strain graph if you take an offset on y axis then this is your fy value and this another graph where definitive yield point is there so this is considered as fy let us look at now is 1786 this is the amendment number 3 of is 1786 uh, where in this table number 3 this uh, defines the various mechanical properties 0.2% proof stress values are mentioned for different grades ap415 ap415 d ap 500 and till they are mentioned up to ap700 there are in all 11 categories are mentioned of the reinforcement there is second uh, restrict second uh, criteria is about 0.2% proof stress yield stress maximum value and this maximum value is restricted only for s grade 
no other grade it has any restriction as far as IS 1786 is concerned. So for FE 415S this value is restricted to 540. Third criteria is an important criteria. It defines criteria about the ratio of ultimate tensile strength with 0.2% proof stress or yield stress whatever. Here you can see here for 415 that ratio mentioned as 1.10. It indicates that the ultimate tensile strength should be at least 10% more than 0.2% proof stress. If you look at the same criteria for ductile FE415D, it is required to be 12% more. If you look at for S category, it is mentioned as 25% more. Here, although it is a mention as 10%, but again there is a thing value is mentioned that is of 485. Here it is 12%, but there is again a value, minimum value, required, that is of 500. Now here itself the ratio is much higher, so there is no such requirement uh, is there about some particular minimum value. One more interesting thing if you see, as your grade goes on increasing, this requirement of TSYS ratio it goes on reducing. So here in FE uh, 600, you just require TA strength to be 6% more. Whereas if you are in FE 415D, the code is expecting it to be 12% more. Then there are elongation requirements are also there that FE 415, your minimum elongation requirement mentioned is 14.5. FE 415D it is 18%, this is 18%, FE 500 it is 12% and 16% for FE 500D. So if you are going to use FE 500 then uh, uh, we will see how this to be interpreted in case of ductile detailing provisions. Next we shall see the provisions of Indian Seismic Ductile Detailing Code IS 13920. 2016 and there are further two amendments are there. So what are the various requirements in IS 13920 2016? If you see here, it is the grade of 415 or less is allowed. Of course, the grade should confirm to IS 1786. Of grade FE 500 and FE 550, that is high strength deform steel bars, there is a requirement mentioned on the elongation. So if it is either FE 500 or FE 550, you can use even uh, if you are uh, compile, uh, you are complying with the uh, 13920 ductility requirements. But the condition is your elongation should be more than 14.5 percent. Whereas you have seen that for FE 550, as per 1786, the elongation requirements are not 14.5 they are lesser than 14.5 one more restriction here has come the actual 0.2 percent proof strength of steel bars based on tensile test must not exceed their characteristic 0.2 percent proof strength by more than 20 percent now understand this clause say i am designing something with fe 500 grade so 1.2 times of it that is 600 now if my test results are showing 0.2% proof strength in my test reports is 620 not allowed. You cannot use, you cannot say yeah it is a high strength, good strength, I can use it. No. So this way is this restriction is there. Then 5.3.3 the ratio of actual ultimate strength to the actual 0.2% proof strength shall be at least 1.15 the way there is a override mention for a ducti by ductile code about elongation the same way here there is a override mention in this about the ultimate tensile strength ratio to the 0.2 percent proof strength so it is mentioned as 1.15 so again if i go back to this table of IS 1786 you can see here it is 1.10 or here it is 1.12 or for 500 it is 1.08 550 it is 1.06 IS 13920 is allowing you IS 500 and IS 550 but there are two conditions the elongation should be more than 14.5 percent and the ratio of actual ultimate strength 
to the actual 0.2% proof strength shall be at least 1.15. The ultimate tensile strength should be at least 15% more than 0.2% proof. There is one more amendment and this amendment uh, has further defined certain thing. So 5.3.1 is uh, again mentioning some compliances. So here the elongation shall be at least 14.5%. So whatever is the grade, the elongation straight away is mentioned as 14.5% minimum. It should be more than that. Ratio of ultimate stress to 0.2% proof stress shall not exceed 1.25. Now you can see here there is one additional restriction has come. Here you can see the ratio of ultimate stress to 0.2% proof stress shall not exceed 1.25. Ratio of ultimate stress to 0.2% proof stress shall be at least 1.15. So what does it mean? It means the ratio of ultimate stress to 0.2% proof stress shall lie in between 1.15 to 1.25. Steel shall be only of strength grades with minimum 0.2% proof stress of FE 415 MPA, 500 MPA or 550 MPA in addition to other requirements of IS 1786. Here in uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0.1 D, IS 3920 ductile requirement clearly mention that which grades of the reinforcement are allowed and that are 415 MPA, 500 MPA, 550 MPA. Be clear that if you are following IS 3920, you are not allowed to use reinforcement grade more than 550. To summarize what are the requirements? Requirements are very simple. If you are following 13920 provisions, you can use 415 and 500 and 550 grade. The elongation should be more than 14.5. Proof strength should not be more than by 20% of your characteristic strength you are using in design. And there is a, a particular restriction of band on the ratio of ultimate tensile stress to the 0.2% proof stress. Should be more than 1.15. Uh, but it should be less than 1.25. Now let us look at the provisions uh, mentioned in IS 16700 uh, clause number 5.7.2.1 characteristic yield strength or 0.2% proof stress of the steel reinforcement bar used in the construction shall not exceed 1.2% times the value used in design. So this is the same requirement what is mentioned in IS 13920. Second is the ultimate strength of the reinforcement bar shall not exceed 1.25 times the characteristic yield strength 0.2% so same is covered in the IS13920. There is no special requirement or additional requirement and of course in general uh, it is in the amendment 1 they have mentioned that the reinforcement shall confirm to IS 1786. I hope uh, this will make the idea clear. Now, depending on what type of structure you are looking at, you will follow. If you are uh, following a high rise structure in a seismic zone, naturally your provisions of 13920 will dominate. And if you have seen the provision of 16700 are in line with uh, 13920. But if you are in a non-seismic zone and a tall building, then also uh, now because certain requirement has come up in IS 16700, so you are supposed to follow that. Uh, although you may not be following uh, 13920, if you are in a, a low seismic zone like Hyderabad or Bangalore, similar to that, then also if it is a high rise structure, if it is height is more than 50 meters, then you have to follow these two uh, provisions mentioned in IS 16700. Can use higher grades than 550. You are in a non seismic zone. Your height of the tower is less than 50 meters. In that case, the governing requirements will be only from IS 1786. 
and IS 456 is in general definitions are applicable everywhere. So I hope this uh, today's discussion has made it clear that what are the various strength requirements of reinforcement as per different governing codes related to that. If you find my this tutorial helpful, please like, share and subscribe. That will encourage me to uh, deliver more and more such lectures. Thank you very much.